It was the first day of October, and all things considered, Mitford was pretty quiet. Around the tenth of the month is when it would hit the fan. The chlorophylls of summer foliage would have degraded into non-fluorescent chlorophyll catabolites, and hidden pigments would explode in a pyrotechnic extravagance of scarlet, gold, vermilion, and out loud yellow. While the display would be rampant throughout the Blue Ridge Mountains, Mitford was proud to offer its very own Autumn Expo. A brace of mature Acer rubrum, which paraded from Town Hall to First Baptist, such annual spectacle would not be missed by tourists in the thousands steaming up the mountain with the ubiquitous cell phone and occasional Nikon. There was, however, a caveat. There were now two gaps in the parade of maples, one where lightning had struck in 2005, and the other where trunk rot had finally dealt its fatal blow. The council had ordered the stump ground and the vacant sites disguised with mulch. Mitford had not enjoyed a furor in quite a while, and somehow, collectively, had decided the time had come. A party of locals demanded that the maples be replaced full size, which would cost the town a bundle. Others campaigned to replant with beds of pansies, historically known as the town flower. A group calling themselves the Vocal Locals objected to pine bark mulch as too acidic for the soil and pressed for cocoa bean hulls, which others rejected outright as too foreign. Esther Cunningham's copy of the weekly Muse hit the porch at 7.30 sharp. She read the feature on the trees while cranked back in her recliner. She hadn't served as Mitford's mayor, albeit former, for nothing. She knew about such things. People were right about the pine bark. Get it off of there and go with the pansies. How often did they get a blank spot to drop in a couple flats of pansies? As for replacement, no. Nobody in their right mind would go for the cost of spading in mature trees and young stock would look ridiculous among their elders. After sixteen nose-to-the-grindstone years, she'd been retired for how long? Too long. She had sworn never to run for office again, but didn't people change their minds all the time? And so what if she was gaining on ninety? Take the woman in England who was a hundred and still tendon bar pullin' pints, she called it, three days a week, and that hundred-year-old gal writin' for a newspaper asking people, got any news? And how about the mayor who was still marin' at a hundred and two, bless her heart? Just lately she dropped dead coming out of a council meeting, which was no surprise. How many of those monkey shows had she, Esther Cunningham, barely escaped with her life. She located the remote in the pocket of the recliner, cranked upright, and reached for her iPad. Having an iPad had opened a whole new world. Her daughters could no longer accuse her of being Stone Age. She knew what was going on out there with people living longer.' 